Monsanto, one of the world's most despised companies. Mention the name and you're almost guaranteed a negative reaction. Mention GMOs to the same crowd and the response will be equally repulsed. But with genetically modified organisms and to some extent Monsanto, there's a considerable knowledge gap that affects the way we look at these issues. Hello and welcome to In Focus. Food Inc. was a 2008 documentary that shone a light on corporate farming in the United States. Monsanto, Tyson Foods, Smithfield Foods and Purdue Farms were placed under significant heat for their role in what Food Inc. portrayed as inhumane economically and environmentally unsustainable food production. The documentary was a huge success, both critically and commercially, and gave us a reason to demand more from our major retailers. While Food Inc. was a powerful expose on the state of the American food industry, it also carried an anti-GMO undertone. It could certainly be argued that companies like Monsanto abuse their power in the marketplace forcing farmers to use their product by way of litigation and intimidation. But Monsanto's actions cloud the GMO debate, making it difficult for the public to make an informed opinion on the safety and efficacy of altered products. Many anti-GMO campaigners either don't understand the science or choose to ignore it, using buzzwords like toxins, contamination and natural living. More than 2,000 studies document that biotechnology does not pose an unusual threat to human health and genetically modified food is as safe or safer than conventional or organic food. By safer, take the transgenic potato, one of the most successfully modified plants to date. It was altered to resist the Colorado potato beetle without the use of spray on pesticides. It was sold from 1995 to 2000, but fear-mongering from anti-GMO organisations led to its discontinuation. A win for environmentalists, right? Nope. If you ever needed a definition of irony, those farmers are back covering their potatoes in insecticides. The most comprehensive study was led by geneticist Alison Van Enanam and Amy Young from the University of California. They poured over 29 years worth of data covering more than 100 billion animals from when animal feed was 100% non-GMO to when it was more than 90% GMO. No difference. They found GM food was safe and nutritionally equivalent to its non-GM counterpart. Genetically modified food is among the most scrutinised scientific subjects in history and so it should be. GMO crops aren't inherently different from other breeding techniques that we know and trust. Selective breeding, for example. Close to all GMOs are transgenic, which essentially means scientists will take existing genes from one plant and combine it with another. They'll study it, make sure it's safe, then release it. It's the same principle as the way we selectively bred our domesticated animals and for thousands of years, our food. For example, this is what bananas looked like before we bred them into what we eat today. There are a number of arguments against modified organisms, but safety should no longer be one of them. While concerns continue, so will the studies. But so far, the results have been overwhelming. Instead, anti-GMO campaigners should be focusing on making sure there is the correct legislative framework to make sure companies like Monsanto don't abuse their strong market position. Monsanto is most certainly a massive company worth around $55 billion. But it isn't the world-shapingly large behemoth that people believe. It's smaller than UPS, Costco and John Deere. It's not even close to Apple, Walmart or Chevron. So rest easy, Monsanto isn't going to be taking over the government anytime soon. But steps also need to be taken to make sure biodiversity remains at a point where the world's food supply isn't left open to swift and devastating ruin. Bill Nye the Science Guy famously changed his anti-GMO views after meeting with Monsanto scientists. It's a credit to him that someone with such steadfast views can be open to change, but that's what good scientists do. That's what science does, and that's what we should be open to doing. National Geographic recently discussed the war on science, and statistics certainly paint a bloody battle. A recent study by the Pew Research Center found that 88% of scientists agree that it's completely safe to eat genetically modified food. Compare that to just 37% of US adults who believe the same thing, a 51% gap in opinion. Science isn't the problem, we are. David Attenborough recently told Barack Obama that he'd never met a child that wasn't interested in science and natural history. He also posed the question, when and where do we lose that interest? 
When and where do we lose that trust? Don't get me wrong, GMOs aren't the save all. They should be approached cautiously and scrutinized relentlessly as they have been and continue to be today. But once they're approved, they should be embraced. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.